In today's video, we are going to be talking about which of the foreign or imported products are still available in stores in Russia and which ones have been substituted uh, with alternatives. Well, it is no longer surprising to see shelves stocked with uh, locally manufactured substitute products in response to the imposed sanctions in Russia. Of course, there are sanctions, but as well, Russians have to survive and they know how to survive. <laughs> they are survivors. Um, Russian retailers have, uh, retailers have successfully replaced these missing imported goods with uh, some comparable com uh, replacements. These uh, have helped in preventing any shortages. Nonetheless, certain brands have remained in the market. Some continue providing essential goods, while others have rebranded their products to continue sales in the market. One of such brands is the Coca-Cola Company. So the Coca-Cola uh, rebranded after the official withdrawal from Russia. Since uh, products under the name Dobre are produced by the company Mouton, 100% of which shares are owned by the Coca-Cola company. Yeah. So it turns out that the brand managed to leave Russian market and stay on at the same time. So now Coca-Cola became Dobre Cola. Dobri means good. Dobri Cola. Sprite became Dobri Limon Lime and Fanta became Dobri Apelsin. The same scenario is observed with other beverages belonging to this company. That is to say that Russians might no longer easily see products with the familiar brand name sold in stores. Nevertheless, they can still enjoy their preferred soft drink. It appears that the Coca-Cola company, after departing from the market, has decided to concentrate on producing exclusively domestic brands. So these brands have been here before. Now they're going to continue on it. And such brands are like Dobrik, which I mentioned in previous. So instead of the name Coca-Cola, Fanta, Sprite, it was those names. And then we have the Rich and then the Maya Simia as well. The amazing thing about Russia. If you still feel like uh, to drink something real, in quote, then you're always welcome. No one forbids you to use the internet to place your order. Because a package of 24 cans of Coca-Cola produced in Poland can now be ordered for 2,000 to 2,500 rubles. So you can order in stores or even go to the stores like Coosville and buy or order from stores like White Berries or Ozone Fresh. PepsiCo um, also employed a similar tactic. By discontinuing the production of sodas in Russia, such as Pepsi, Mirinda, and Schweppes, and introducing alternative drinks. For instance, Fruit Style Orange, which is comparable to Mirinda, and uh, Eververse, that resembles Schweppes. And may I tell you that the latter brand is a decent replacement for the original drink. But this, of course, is all. Um, purely subjective. In addition, PepsiCo continues to sell its other well-known brands such as the Lubimi, J7 and Fructovisad. These brands have been here before the sanctions and they just continue to um, produce, I mean these products. Now, um, the chips under the brand Lay's, Krustim, uh, Cheetos, Doritos also remained in Russia. So we still see them and buy them in all the flavors available. Uh, one might say, what about the chocolates? Yeah. Now, um, Fronero or Froneri. 
I'll write the company. Uh, Franeri is the authorized manufacturer of certain Nesso products in Russia. Well, the company has produced some of the most popular products under license specifically for the Russian market, including the Maxibon, Alpine Gold, and the Nesso Nesquik chocolates. Um, well, it is said that all the ingredients in the new product remain the same except for one detail, which is like um, the they now use regular milk rather than powdered milk, which I find is good because most people here in Russia take regular milk more than powdered milk, if I must say. For coffee lovers, the big brother of Nescafe Dolce Gusto, Nespresso, also suspended sales in Russia at the Nestle plant in Krasnodar territory. Only instant coffee is produced under the Nescafe brand. Now, other foreign manufacturers are not missing the opportunity, are also trying to fill the niche of the outgoing giants with products of the same taste but under different brands, as you've seen. Uh, domestic producers like the Achakova and the Chernogalovka can also boast of their own versions of popular drinks and products. Because that drink? Don't worry, Russia has not yet turned to uh, Arabian countries or, you know, stuck with vodka. Well, some foreign brands among strong alcohols also announced their departure, just like everybody did but the russian authorities have already solved this problem with the help of para imports of the most famous brands uh, such as the jägermeister whitehurst jack daniels and so on this strong alcohol still flaunts, uh, flaunts on the shelves of stores um despite this some distributors and liquor producers have stepped in and the shelves are now filled with jeans, whiskeys, and cognacs bottled in, guess where? Russia. You guessed right. <laughs> As we can see, not many brands have entirely left the Russian market. Instead, companies have discovered a way to remain relevant. While some have introduced rebranding, others have started advertising similar products using different names. Nevertheless, they have certainly lost their previous dominance, and consequently, there is a great opportunity for both locals and other lesser-known foreign brands to emerge as leaders, and they have rightly taken this chance. Nonetheless, there have not been uh, any many or significant changes so far, since the demand for parallel imported products still remains high. Moreover, not all companies have completely departed from the Russian market, as we have seen in this video and will continue to see in subsequent videos to come. So if you're interested, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button. And if you don't want to subscribe, give us a like or even a dislike. <laughs> it helps us to improve. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.